Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this demonstration, we're gonna use the Brainworks BXXLV2, which is a mastering limiter in two different scenarios. We're gonna use it to make our song loud and competitive, and we're also gonna use it to give our music clarity and transparency. So stick around and enjoy the video. The Brainworks BXXL V2 is an MS mastering limiter with a mid-low, mid-high, and a side channel. In this first example, we're going to use an EDM track and we're going to try to get the song sounding loud and competitive while maintaining the characteristics and definition of the original mix. So for this, I've set up the song on this channel called Dry and right here, which is called uh, Gago Mastering. This is by Jacob Gago. So what I've done is I've matched the levels from the dry and the master channel. So even though we're increasing our input on our limiter by 9 dB, you're not gonna hear much of a volume difference until the very end when we pull the fader back up to Unity. But let's go ahead and bypass this and uh, let's listen to our original song. Here we go. Okay, good. So let's unmute our master channel and let's bring in the plugin. And before I actually run some audio, I'm just gonna explain some of the uh, settings here. So the first thing that you typically wanna do is you wanna set your ceiling, which is the master out. And a good starting point is half a dB. And the reason for this is that if you're gonna be printing to CD, you might want to do minus 0.1. But if you're gonna do MP3 or lossy format, you might wanna bring it down to even minus one dB. So we're gonna start at minus 0.5 and then we'll adjust it there at the end. Uh, the next thing is simply cranking up the input until you see the peak meter slide up. In this case, I'm gonna crank it up by 9 dB. You also have these meters here. You have the peak limiters, which are in the middle. You have the RMS lim uh, meters, which are on the side. And you have your dynamic range meters, which are above. Great. So without any processing, Let's go ahead and reset these settings. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we crank up uh, 9 dB into the limiter. And we'll compare that with the original song. So again, I'll play the original one and then I'll switch to the mastered version, which is gonna be this track. Here we go. So what you should be listening for is the definition and depth in the low end. And what we are able to do with this limiter is separate the mid, low, and the mid, high. Now the reason we want to do this is because as we crank up more input into the limiter, what's going to happen is going, it's going to detect the low frequency information. You know, the bass, the sub, everything that's down there. Without the mid, low channel, this limiter will be hitting the ceiling much faster. But by separating the mid, low, I can click solo and choose my crossover frequency. So let's play this from a different section and let's adjust our crossover frequency. So around 180 is where I'm able to isolate the bass and the 808 and separate that from the snare and everything that's above that. And there's a couple of things that I can do here. I can increase the XL knob, which is gonna increase the harmonic distortion. So this is gonna make the mid low sound louder without actually boosting any gain. So check it out. Now that's a little bit too much of a boost, so I'll bring this down to around 30. Great. The other thing that I can do is play around with the side mix or the side chain mix. 
And with this, if I just crank up the gain boost here, what it's going to do is going to make my track sound wider. Check it out. But what happens is if you crank up the gain too much, you get more of the reverb. So we don't want to do that. We want to bring this back to zero. Instead, what we want to do is we want to play around with a sidechain mix. And with this, I can solo the sidechain and I can feed some of the mid information to the side so it creates a little bit of a pumping effect. And that's going to make it sound more natural. So for this, we'll just solo the sidechain and bring the uh, sidechain mix down until we hear some of the mid information. So pay attention for like the kick and the snare to be audible here. And uh, when we hear a little bit of that, then we know we're at a good balance. Okay, so around 65% is a good starting point there. Now, we really haven't done much um, to our song except for crank up the input gain into the limiter and then separate the mid low and increase the uh, XL, which is harmonic distortion or harmonic content to the bottom. But as you can tell, when I go back and forth between the original and the process version, you're not losing, you're not crushing your peaks, you're not crushing your dynamic range. So I'm going to play it for you one more time and then we're going to bring the volume up. Okay, great. Now that we have the limiter where we want it to be, let's go ahead and bring up our fader. This is going to be a return fader uh, to Unity. So now we're able to actually hear how loud our track is going to be. And this is going to blow your mind. Watch. Check it out. We're going to go from the original one to the loud one. And um, just listen for the clarity and punch. And um, you might want to turn your speakers down a little bit or else it might be too loud. But check it out. So as you can tell, I mean, it's definitely much louder and uh, more impactful. Uh, but the key thing is to level match um, as we were doing before, you know, with the original one. That way you're actually hearing what the limiter is doing. That way you're not over crushing it. But by using the BXXLV2 on a EDM track, we're able to get it sounding very competitive and very loud. But now let's do something different. We're going to jump to a different track and we're not aiming for loudness so much. What we're aiming for is for clarity and transparency. So for this example, we're using a track by Emma Ballantyne and it's acoustic guitar, vocals, there's some strings there, but uh, listen to the original one now. Now I am addressing some issues in the mix uh, with some EQ. I'm actually using BX Refinement to deal with some of the harshness. I'm also using an instance of the Brainworks BX Digital uh, for addressing some of the low mids, especially on the guitars. Uh, we're using some dynamic EQ and then we're boosting up a, just a bit of the vocal presence. And then that's going into the limiter. But as far as level match, it's level match. That way we can compare the before and after. And as with uh, the previous track, the first thing we did is just increase the input. And in this case, we cranked it up uh, by 12 dB, which is really a lot. 
but uh, it all depends on context. So this track, as you can tell from the mix, it was mixed actually very low with a lot of uh, headroom. So 12 dB is just relative to where the track is, okay? So let's go ahead and crank this up to 12 dB. And again, we left our master output at minus uh, half of a dB. And the key thing with this was to activate the mid-low so that I can separate all the bass information um, below the fundamental of the vocal, or below the, the female singer. Now this song doesn't have like a loud kick and a loud punch, but I still want to maintain those low frequencies from getting in the way of everything that's in the middle, which is the most important thing. So again, we'll isolate, we'll solo that, and then we'll move around our crossover frequency. Okay, so around 140, 146 is we're able to uh, separate the bass. And let's go ahead and listen to the mid-high now. So now you're just going to listen to everything that's uh, above 143 on the mid-channel. Cool, let's also listen to what's on the side channel. So on the side channels you'd expect, you have the reverbs, you have um, the guitars pan left and right, and more, more of the ambience. Now we don't want to change the balance there, but what we want to do is we want to bring up the vocals up a little bit forward in the mix. So let's see how we can do that. Again, one of the ways that we can do that is by increasing the XL, which is the harmonic uh, content, harmonic distortion. So let's see if we want to use the XL or if we want to use the gain boost. So let's go ahead and increase this to around uh, 20% which might be of a, a little bit of a high setting, but we'll kind of compare the before and after. So this is the dry version. And this is the mastered version. And it works, but I think it's a little bit too much, so we'll just bring this down. And let's increase the gain boost instead. Let's go up 1 dB. And for mastering, this might be a little bit too much. So we'll test it out and see if we need to bring it down. So again, we'll play the original one. And the mastered version. Yeah, I think it's a little bit too much. So we'll actually bring this up a tenth of a dB. Now you might be wondering um, why so small of the changes. Well, the reason is that when we're increasing a tenth of a dB on the mid-high, it's also bringing up anything else that's there in the center. So with these moves, you want to be very subtle. And again, we're listening to it uh, with a, a level match. That way we can kind of hear what the compressor or what the limiter is doing. Cool, so the last thing that I'll mention here is that we can take these settings, let's go ahead and copy this from B and paste it on C, and let's deactivate the mid-low, and now we have more of a traditional limiter, which is a broadband limiter, and uh, that's gonna be um, pretty much listening to all the frequencies, it's not gonna separate the mid-low, and then we can kind of compare before and after. So when I click on B, that means that the mid-low is separate, and when we click on C, that means that uh, the mids uh, and the sides are, are pretty much equal. So just to ensure that, we'll bring the crossover all the way down. There we go to off, and then we'll bring down our gain boost. And now we're gonna switch between B and C. And uh, again, what you wanna listen for is definition and clarity and also space and width. So here we go, let's play the original. And let's play B, which is with the mid-low. And C, without the mid-low. So I still like B better. I still like the mid-low engaged. 
because I feel that some of the, the low frequencies are not hitting the, um, the, the limiter as fast and uh, it's able to give me that separation and basically what it does, it allows the vocals to be unaffected by all that low end information. Lastly, we'll bring this up to Unity and we'll compare the original one with the mastered limiter version. And let's jump into another section and check this out. So again, we'll start with the original one and then we'll jump into the mastered version. I loved a man who often let me down That may be why I never throw my heart around so So I hope that you guys learned some real useful information and that which you can apply to your own mixes or if you're mastering as well, giving just an explanation of how the Brainworks BXXLB2 works. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback on the comments below. Be sure to check out PluginAlliance.com for a free trial and demo. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you guys so much for watching.